here we are in location X. It's going to be another hard day at the office. And who better to join me than my friend and colleague Rude? So what are we going to do today? We are going to fish for trout. Okay, let's do it. This is not going to happen. Trout lures do not move for it. Yeah, like I need a good one. The first stone fly is coming. Very good, very, very nice. <laughs> we hope that even the big trout will come up to the surface and uh, eat this. We'll see soon what's the situation on the river, but at least it's looking good. There's some insects already. All dependent on how much uh, stone flies and that's dependent a lot with the amount of light. So they start to hatch around now in the middle of March and it continues about one month uh, from here on out. It's going to be the first stone fly hatch. I guess the correct term in English would be the February red. Uh, we call them sumare or sumukorento in Finnish. So I think we're going to head to that island over there, wait on it and then wait that slow part of the of the river to those weeds and fish the part over there which which usually keeps fish this time of the year and also there's it's a good place for the stoneflies to hatch uh, the fish or the stoneflies don't really like the really fast current this time of the year so we're gonna head to those slow moving parts as well above these rapids and also below it and a really good thing here is you can see Matti Huidila over there he's marking the spots where the fish has been spawning so we can wade here, but they know really accurately where the fish have been spawning. So we can actually go around those and we won't be stepping on the eggs of, of the trout. So I'm rigging this other road up here. And even though it would be nice to catch a fish with a dry fly, uh, if we haven't seen any activity on the surface. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rig my other road with, with a a little bit bigger streamer. They quite often work. Black muddler type. It's just a lot of movement. And against the clear sky, almost clear sky, gives nice silhouette. I'm gonna have the first dance. You do that. I have a dry fire on a new phone, so I'll, I'll try with this first and then. I'll change the streamer as well if nothing happens. This is a classic place where you would fish this time of the year. Slow moving water. The trout like that. They don't really like to be on the fast moving water this time of the year. And uh, there's also food because there's these stoneflies. There's the nymphs already crawling in the in the bottoms, trying to get to the surface. I'm uh, fishing blind now. There's no no rises or anything at least yet so i put a i have a dry fly on quite well floating a little bit of hackle on it then i have a stonefly nymph at the end here we have a one trout food crawling as you can see it's pretty much just hatched because the wing, wings are still kind of open and these are the ones which are easily blown from the ice to the river and these are the ones which the fish are feeding so we just saw a fish rising there and now Antti's gonna Antti's gonna cast for that fish. He had a nymph behind his dry fly, but it was going too deep, so he just took the nymph off. Uh, let's see if the fish is interested in, in this dry. Yeah, I think it took from the surface because the stoneflies that hatch here, it's uh, they crawl to the to the shore to hatch. And usually if you see some surface activity, it's, it's, it's the fish taking the, the adults or, you know, the, uh, the ones that has just hatched and just happened to, uh, happened to be, uh, maybe the wind took them from the stone that they hatched on uh, to the surface. And, uh, that's why they are, uh, on the water. So I would, 
I would say that they, this fish took from the surface, not, not really from the surface film. Whoa, fish are. Actually, it liked the twitch. That was a nice take. Yeah. That was beautiful. And it's a take. good sized fish, I think. It, it really liked to uh, wake the fly a little bit. So yeah. it actually didn't want the dead drift. Yeah. It wanted a little bit of wake. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Pretty good start, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have been fishing what, less than 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a big one, but it's a nice one. And it's the first of the year. The first brown trout of the year. Yeah. Oh, there's some sticks. Shit. Not good. Not good. We ma managed to get it out. Is he coming? Yeah, there's some there's sticks some, yeah. on the water, so. Yeah. Nice fish. Good size. Yeah, where is it? There it is. <laughs> dark water and dark <laughs> fish, I couldn't see it. Yeah, Beautiful. Nice one. Yeah. Nice one. First Great. one. Good. Good start. Good. Very good start. And the sun is just about to come out too. Yeah. First fish of the of the Flat. new season, you yeah. would say. Yeah. Because you know the last season actually stopped after New Year's, but uh, really nice. Really nice. It's a beautiful fish. It's really it's in good condition. Really good condition. Dark Some fish like this time of the year, but yeah. really nice looking fish. Obviously it's been feeding yeah. pretty well. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes you get this time of year you can still get, you know, these post spawners. Yeah. yeah. So quite slim. Yeah. So obviously they have a lot of food here. Yeah. So we'll set it free and there's a good ice cover so you can you can go under there. <laughs> have a rest. <laughs> yeah. Good. Now it's your turn. Yeah, let's see. Let's You're see. You're gonna cast one. a streamer? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be later. Cool. Now definitely if there's active fish. If there's one, there's yeah. more. Yeah, hopefully. Definitely. I, I, there's insects at least, yeah. so it should yeah. be good. So the fly is a little bit wet, but it's a CDC fly, really simple one. Just a CDC wing with a little bit of CDC and hackle in the front. And I changed it actually. I first had a dry fly and a nymph. Uh, we saw the fish on the surface and the nymph was dragging the, the dry fly and uh, it was actually hitting the bottom so I took the nymph away but still the, the one that I had first, the dry fly, was with, the, with more hackle and obviously the fish didn't really like that. Changed to this. I tried, tried it with the dead drift. Uh, it started to wake just a little bit so I actually gave a little bit of twitches for it. Kind of like a stone fly waking on the surface and the fish seemed to like that. We got it. After that first fish, no fish on the surface on this spot, so I dry it, tried it with a Nymphetta dry. So now I'm gonna make a couple of casts with the streamer. Let's see if something happens with that and maybe we change the spot. Okay, so it was a good start. It was a good start. But, uh, really but then it got slow. Yeah, like I one mean, or two rises yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. The place where I was fishing, there was a nice deep hole. I could easily cover that and, and the edges, but mm. nothing no. except very cold toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. So it's good to, good to move it yeah. a bit. Well, let's Walk move uh, downstream. Let's Further downstream, there. yeah. Okay. Do we go let's on the go island on this. or? I think we go this side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.
we can see some stoneflies on the surface here and we saw one fish rising there a good good head and tail rise and uh, now I'm gonna wait to the island I try to wait really silently so I won't create a lot of waves because that might scare the fish this uh, this is quite typical place here in Finland uh, for brown trout fishing uh, actually I would say it's even quite long long stretch because many times we're fishing really short rapids between between lakes uh, those are we don't in central Finland we, we don't have that many long rivers it's mainly uh, shorter rapids between lakes like I said and uh, this is actually a couple of kilometers long and uh, there's several different rapids and as you can see here there's many islands and it the, the stream is divided with these islands so there's a lot of fishing places here and uh, yeah there's there's several rapids and at the at the lower part of the stretch it, it flows to a bigger lake and from the bigger lake there's different bait fish coming uh, during the summertime and hopefully also some migratory trout uh, these fish that we're aiming now are are living here year around Fish on. Do you need a net? No, huge fish. Sorry? Because I don't have a net. <laughs> but, but you want a net? I can bring it. Why, if you can? Yeah, that would help. Possibly. It was funny. At the same time as you were fighting this, I had a take for a dry fly. Really? There. Yeah. <laughs> but I it just got loose. I got it hooked yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. just got loose. Well, I think they are kind of activated now. So a dry fly? Oh, well, it's quite. It's a nymph. Well, it, it's it's a it's a big nymph. It's a nymph. <laughs> <laughs> big green nymph. Yeah. Well, the water is really cold. Yeah, it is. I I wouldn't like to swim there. You want to set it loose? Yeah, let's... Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Not massive, but... Good condition again. Obviously, these are feeding well here. Totally, totally frozen. I put my wet gloves on. Maybe that helps. Yeah. Sure. But there's definitely more insects here. Oh yeah, yeah. And on the other side, so there was some hatching here. Yeah. Several. So Good. that might act here. Yeah. The evening could be good. Yeah. Let's see. A moment here, and maybe then we go back upstream. That would be. I'm good gonna check over there again. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I get the same fish to take anymore. I think it felt the hook, but yeah. Maybe there's more. Okay. So as you can see, it's pretty much winter still. It's snow on the ground, and the water is very cold. So proper clothing is really important. Uh, I have a good shell on the on the outside. So I had the Scout 2.0 zip waders. Uh, and underneath, 
I have actually three layers. So I have uh, the Sub-Zero pants with Primaloft. Then I, underneath that, that I have the, uh, the fleece overall. And still underneath that, I have our thin skin. But actually, I'm okay. Uh, I'm not too cold. And one really important thing this time of the year is to have, uh, have the shoes. Uh, if, if you have the possibility to have two wading boots, it's really good to have one size bigger for this time of the year because you can just put a little bit more socks. So I have two, two warm Mer Merinovils, uh, Merinovil uh, wool socks underneath. And of course, you can jam those in a smaller boot as well. But the problem then is that your blood circulation is not going to be really good. So actually you end up be probably even colder than, than you would with only one sock. I'm having a felt sole shoe, so this is one drawback. I mean, they have very good grip when you're wading. But as you can see uh, in the snow, the wet felt, it kind of gathers the snow. And I easily gain about 10 centimeters of length. <laughs> Yeah, we're having lunch. We actually saw one fish rising there, so we have the rods ready here, and if we see another one, we're gonna make a cast. Let's see. This is a very productive place for spawning for the brown trout. It has a good population of wild trout here and they actually succeed in spawning really well. And it's good that we have Matti who's over there, Matti Huitila. Uh, first of all, he's an expert on this place anyway. Uh, and he knows all the places where we can wait, especially this time of the year. And from here on until, let's say, end of May, it's very important because there's the spawn, the eggs are. Uh, they are just the... about, well, they start hatching. Yeah. So you're not supposed to wade, obviously, over them because then you're going to step on the fish. Yeah. So and you so need to know. Hatch. Yeah. You need to know where to go exactly. Yep. So. We've seen here quite a lot of these nymphs um, kind of crawling on the ice, just at the edge of the ice. And they are, well, obviously they are looking for a place because they have to come uh, to a dry place. They either crawl on the, on the ice or on the rock or, or reeds or somewhere where they can come up and then hatch or not to hatch. Sometimes they go back. Still gonna try the drift and if it doesn't take the next cast I'm gonna twitch it a little bit. Yep. <sighs> Perfect. <laughs> it doesn't get a better it doesn't get better than this, I can tell you that. After a long winter, getting some fish with the dry fly. It just doesn't get better than this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good, good. So 
so this place probably looks more like like a place where you would fish for pike but uh, this time of the year it, it, it is just a place where these trout like to be in the slow current and the stoneflies like hatch there as well so yeah it's just a good place this time of the year but uh, during the summertime it's probably no use fishing here nice beautiful fish. fish yeah it took, beautiful. took the drift i yeah. saw it from this side and uh, weighed across and uh, first cast i think i was a little bit short the next cast was perfect and took Get took, took the dry fly and the water is cold. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> uh, so we're fishing the new superhero rod and reel. And we're going to turn this around, although that, that's the hero for us, the rod. But uh, you guys can be the hero for this fish. Because uh, we're going to give one euro per each hero rod or reel sold for uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, organization that does good for the for the rivers and actually you could comment now below if you have uh, good suggestions what that organization could be uh, preferably it should be somewhere in Europe but just shoot a comment and uh, let us know if, if, if you have a good idea who should who do deserve a little bit of money to help uh, the fight with this fish to uh, to make sure that we have this in the future Just the beginning of this stonefly hatch, and we're already, you know, we've caught several fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that's why there's not been too many fishermen yet. Yeah. But this is just like lottery, you know. I mean, yeah. Most of the time, you're the loser. Yeah. And you, you, and you book a day earlier, and then you're you're thinking, yeah, it's going to be a good good time, but then it's a snowstorm. Or something, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sleet coming down. <laughs> Now it's just so nice it's weather. Wind. It's cold, but it's it's not too cold. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And we have some light, and obviously, just like before, mm -hmm. when we had the kind of lighter yeah. moment, we yeah. had some flies hatching, and and we caught some fish. Yeah. Then it got kind of cold and and cloudy. Mm -hmm. Everything was very quiet. Yeah. And now again, we got some some more sun. Well, we still have a little bit of time, maybe an hour or so. <sighs> Probably an hour, yeah. Lokesen X, <laughs> called yeah. Lasakoski. Yeah. <laughs> Central Finland, about three hours from Helsinki, north, between Mikkeli and Jyväskylä. Don't, Don't tell, tell it. anyone. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to pick up my rod. I left my streamer rod on the on the weeds over there, so I hope I don't forget it there. We'll go through quickly what we've been using now for the fishing. So for the uh, dry fly and nymph setup, we've been using very similar setups. We have the nine foot uh, five weight superhero rod. Uh, we have the four six hero reels. Mm -hmm. And the only difference is that I'm using the tunnel line in a five weight and you're using the XO100. XO yeah. And your streamer setup is? This is the Coast Hero, nine foot full line seven. Perfect rod for any kind of streamer fishing. Uh, the reel is XLV Mama. And the line here is, is the hybrid line with interchangeable tips. Yeah, and I'm using the nine and a half foot seven long hero, which is really designed for streamer fishing, single-handed salmon fishing, single-handed spay casting. And I have the Vibe 85 Plus as a line there, and the hero reel, the bigger version, the 7.9. Yeah. Really good all around streamer setup. And these rods are really designed for the purpose you're probably gonna be using them at. So this is kind of a streamer rod. This is designed for coastal fishing with the full aluminum reel seat and a fast, fast uh, action. And then we have the nymphing rods, which are very long nymphing rods with small single leg guides, with very tight spacing to give you good contact and a down locking reel seat. And there's the actually the uh, Hero Nymph and Dry Reel, which is ideal for those rods. Yeah. <laughs> where were you even fishing? <laughs> they just keep on coming. 
We have this saying in Finnish, lajin helppous viehättää. Meaning that this is dead easy. Should I, should I net it for you, sir? Oh, yeah. You can use the net. Come on. It's like a nymph. A okay. proper black nymph. Yeah. Not, not just like a <laughs> nymph with a massive marabou tail. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yep. <laughs> nice trout. Did you see it? No. Just blind casting. Nice. Yeah, it didn't show. Dead drift or uh, dead drift. Very nice color. Yep. Adipose fin is just untouched, so this is a native fish. All of the fish we've caught today have been wild, so they've had yeah, yeah. So that's really cool to see. Yeah. I was basically I was casting towards those yeah. rocks over there. Let I let the fly kind of dead drift. And then it started, just started to kind of tighten up and bang. It was a great start for the new season. Very good trip. I yeah. mean, a lot of yeah. fish, a lot yeah. of fish, much more than I expected. Yeah. I mean, usually this, like we said, these mm. trips are. Yeah, you, you can't know. really expect anything. No, no, no. So, but this was really good. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. really good. Well, on to the next one, and all your viewers, Kalaunna.